Hey guys, Hamilton from Hamilton Talks F1 here. A bit of a different video today. As you can see, I am not in my room. I'm outside. I'm here in uh, Worcester for an exhibition, but not just any exhibition. This is a Formula One exhibition at the Worcester Art Gallery Museum. And uh, it's a bit of a different one because uh, today we're going to be looking at an exhibition that surrounds a Formula One driver that you may never have heard of. He's a local driver from this part of, uh, this part of England. He's called Peter Collins. He drove for Ferrari in the 1950s and nearly became world champion. Today they're holding an exhibition celebrating his life and career. So why don't you come on in and uh, I'll show you around. So those were some of the clips that I grabbed during the exhibition and I thought it was actually a really good one. There was a lot more on show than I expected. So there was a lot of ra old racing memorabilia that uh, got on show from his racing careers. In particular, one of my favorite things was his actual helmet that he wore in around 1958. It's amazing just how different the helmets are from that era of racing compared to now. It's like chalk and cheese. You know, it was just a, a wooden helmet with basically a strap underneath the chin. Whereas obviously now the full face crash helmets, visor and everything fully protected. There were also other things like his racing gloves that he wore, not in Formula One, but uh, during another event, I think it was an endurance race. There was also a lot of great pictures on show, pictures of his Formula One career, but also pictures of him during his youth when he was growing up and also other events that he competed in, particularly endurance racing, which is what he did in between. Formula One races and when he was trying to sort of make a name for himself in his early years in Formula One. So the main reason why I'm doing this video is because Peter Collins is a local driver. In fact, he's so local that he literally was born and grew up about two miles down the road from where I live. So his family owned a garage in a place called Musto Green, which is near Kidderminster. The family owned garage is actually still there today, uh, although it has moved across the road because now there are some houses that are, uh, are where the original garage was. But the cottage, Talbot Cottage, is where he grew up and it is still there to this day. I've driven past it hundreds of times. I only recently knew about it, having done a bit of research on Peter Collins when his name came up in a documentary about Ferrari. It's called uh, Ferrari Racing to Immortality and um, it was a bit about Ferrari in the 1950s and Peter was one of the drivers obviously captured in this documentary and he was one of the big names at Ferrari during this period. So I thought I'd give you a bit of background to Peter as a racing driver as well. So having grown up obviously as the son of a um, of a garage owner. He began his racing career in the late 1940s in Formula 3 and eventually made his Formula 1 debut in 1952 when he was just 21 years old at the Swiss Grand Prix, initially with a team called HW Motors. And after a few seasons racing for them and BRM in 1955, he got his big break in 1956 racing for Ferrari. And this came about after he won an endurance race called the Targa Floria, which was driven on the island of Sicily in Italy and he was driving a Mercedes-Benz alongside Sterling Moss and they won the race. And this is one of the, sort of the big endurance races of the time, as you know, it was a, as big as Le Mans. His performance during this race caught Enzo Ferrari's attention and this led to him obviously getting the drive. So he became part of the Ferrari driver lineup alongside several drivers, including, of all people, one Manuel Fangio, who was the best driver of that time and at, the, at that stage was a three-time world champion. So during 1956, he had a successful first year in red he won two Grand Prix at Spa and the French Grand Prix and he went into the season finale at Monza with a chance of being world champion. He was going up against Fangio and Sterling Moss who was driving for Maserati. And all things were going to plan at the halfway stage when he was running in the top three while Moss had retired from the race and Fangio was just bringing his car into the pits to retire. 
with mechanical issues. So with his main competitors out, this meant that Collins was on target to be world champion and Britain's first Formula One world champion. But remarkably and unexpectedly, Collins actually pulled into the pits to hand his car over to Fangio because this was allowed back then where drivers could swap cars if one had broken down and was out of the race. So Collins was effectively sacrificing his championship hopes to allow Fangio to continue on in the race and win the world championship. This was an act of generosity that went down well with not just Fangio but also Enzo Ferrari. It gives you an insight into the sign of the times where drivers were a lot more gentlemanly but, and certainly than they are now. I mean, could you imagine Max Verstappen breaking down and Sergio Perez pulling into the pits to hand his car over to him so he continued on? in the race. So Collins missed out on winning the World Championship that year and becoming Britain's first Formula 1 World Champion. But he said the reason that he decided to give up his car for Fangio was because he felt that he was still young in his career and would have plenty more opportunities to win a World Championship. But in 1957 it was a much more difficult year, the Ferrari was not as competitive. Collins only stood on the podium twice that year and didn't win a race. But in 1958 Ferrari built and designed a completely different new car and it was a lot more competitive. But it wasn't Collins that was getting the most out of the package, it was actually his teammate and good friend Mike Hawthorne who would go on to win the World Championship that year and in doing so be Britain's first Formula 1 World Champion. But for Collins there were still highlights during the year, in particular his victory at the British Grand Prix, his home event of course, and he won that with a dominant performance and pretty much led from start to finish, holding off Sterling Moss to win the race. But even though he won the race, Collins was still quite a way behind Hawthorne in the World Championship when they went to the next round at the Nürburgring for the German Grand Prix. And Collins was actually fighting to try and win his second race in a row. He was fighting for the lead with Tony Brooks and Hawthorne. But just as Collins started to apply pressure on Brooks, that's when he made a critical error. And this would not just cost him the chance of winning the race, it would sadly also cost him his life. He went into a right-hander a little bit too quickly and this led him to run wide and go into a ditch which somersaulted his car and threw him into a tree where he suffered severe head injuries which he sadly would later succumb to at hospital later that day. There's a little dip, we went into that and there's a sharp right-hander after that and um he took it just a little too wide, he didn't turn into it soon enough. And um, the car hit the bank and turned over. How fast was he travelling, would you say? How fast were you? I don't know. No. So Collins would sadly end up being one of the drivers that was killed during this period where safety was obviously nowhere near the standards that it is to this day and it really did rob us of someone who definitely could have gone on to become a world champion. He was that good. It was pretty well evident just how respected and admired Collins was both as a person and a driver when at his funeral a couple of weeks later the likes of Fangio, Enzo Ferrari and Sterling Moss were all in attendance. In fact Collins would end up being one of Enzo Ferrari's favourite drivers because of the close bond that they shared together. But what strikes me is that when you think of the best drivers of that period in Formula 1 Collins' name never seems to come up, he almost seems to get cast aside, despite the fact that on his day he was as good as the Fangios, the Alberto Ascaris, the Mike Hawthorns, the Sterling Mosses. His name certainly does deserve a lot more recognition than it does get. His stats show that he won three Grand Prix in 32 races, standing on the podium nine times and scoring 47 points, with his best season being 1956 when he finished third in the World Championship. I think there is no doubt that Peter Collins was a driver who was clearly capable of becoming a world champion had his career not been cut so sadly short. So I think that it's great that this exhibition was put on so that he gets remembered more fondly, people can learn about him and ultimately his legacy that he left behind lives on. So there you have it, I hope you enjoyed the video, a bit of a different one to usual. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. I've been amazed by your support so far, so keep it coming. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.